Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. In the last video we launched the Lumen PNP kits and it was a crazy day. I was absolutely blown away with the support and how many people immediately hopped in to buy one. Thank you all so much for the support. We are so excited to have a whole bunch more people that now have these machines that can give their feedback and suggest improvements and upgrades and make the whole thing just that much better. I did see some comments on the video of some people looking for some footage of it working in a production setting. And I have shown this before. I've shown it populating ring lights and populating its own motherboard. But it sounds like y'all wanna see the whole process. How do you, from the beginning to the end, use a Lumen PMP to assemble your PCBA? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I have to make a panel of ring lights, so I'm gonna take you through the whole process step by step so you can see how I use a Lumen PMP to assemble boards. Let's do it. So first up is solder paste. This is our stencil setup with some cleaning equipment and our little makeup fridge for the solder paste. We're making ring lights today, so I've got my ring light stencil all mounted up. We're gonna grab the paste from the fridge and we make sure that the leaded and unleaded stuff is very, very clearly labeled. We only wanna use the unleaded stuff for production, but we keep some leaded on hand just cause it's good to have. This is the paste we use, it's lead free, it's worked super well for us so far. It's got a really low reflow temperature, which is fantastic. So now I'll mount a fresh panel into our little jig. It's just some PCBs taped to a table with the stencil taped on top. This is a really easy way to just make a little setup where it's pretty easy to put paste on a board but it can be a bit finicky, so we're gonna get one of these in the future, and we think it's gonna be a lot easier and more repeatable. We use this scraper to deposit paste on boards. It works pretty well and a lot better than a credit card has for me, even though I know a lot of people have good luck with credit cards. I would really like to get a proper industrial one in the future though. This thing's technically meant for drywall, but it works pretty well. We got a nice glob of paste there, and then it's squeegee time. I put a nice even pressure as I drag it across. I'm trying to keep the blade pretty flat against the stencil as I go across and I apply really nice even pressure. I don't wanna have like the sharp edge of the blade actually pushing into the stencil. I kinda wanna use the flat of it to just apply even pressure with the paste between the stencil and the blade. I scrape any extra paste I still have the scraper into the jar and lift the stencil. Then I give it a once over. I found that incorrectly applying paste to the board is the number one reason that we've had problems with our boards that we've made in house so far. Mostly just accidentally forgetting to put a little bit of paste onto one of the pads. Like I just didn't squeegee across a couple holes in the stencil and some parts just didn't get any paste. So checking the paste after actually squeegeeing it across is an incredibly important step. Now we can mount the board on the machine. I'm using this bracket part, which can either have magnets glued to the bottom or it can be mounted directly to the staging plate. In my configuration, I have one mounted rigid and the other three float with magnets so I can adjust them and make sure that it's actually holding the panel really nice and rigid. It's the exact right height to put the top of the board in the focal range of the top camera and it's designed for 1.6 millimeter boards. All right, so this is my machine setup. I've got two staging plates with one half of the machine holding the panel and then the other half holding the LEDs the capacitors, the resistors, and the level shifting chip. This is the first time I'm running a job on this machine, so I might find some optimizations as I go through and test this. I also just designed these awesome little spool holders that clip onto the front rail, which makes it way easier to manage all the reels of components. I'll be publishing it really soon once I get the design tweaked and working well. Okay, time to dive in. I'll make sure the machine is connected to my computer and then boot up OpenPMP. Then I connect to the machine and then hit the home icon. It'll home first using the mechanical limit switches and then it does the homing fiducial procedure. This removes the inaccuracy of the mechanical homing, which is actually incredibly variable. Fiducial homing is super important. And then it does nozzle tip run out. Cool, so now we're all homed. Now I just really like to double check that my feeders are all set up before I run a job. I usually will just do this the first few times that I'm running a job just to make sure that I have everything set up on that machine and everything's configured correctly. And then later after I've run it, you know, maybe half a dozen times, I'll just click run and I know the feeders are all set up. But because this is the first time I'm running this job on this machine, I'll just double check them. I'm using all tray feeders here, which is the type of feeder you can pick in OpenPMP, but there's a whole bunch of other options, which I definitely encourage that you play with. They're really interesting and there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in each one. So each feeder has a position and a part assigned to it. I've added all the parts and packages into OpenPMP myself, but if you import a board file from KiCad or Altium or Eagle, OpenPMP will automatically generate them all for you, which is really nice. First, I'll click this button to move the top camera to the feeder position for the 100 nanofarad capacitors. If it's off at all and not perfectly centered in the void in the tape, not the component, because the component can wiggle a little bit. You really want to align it with the tape. If it's off at all, you can jog it to the center position and then save that position with this button. So now I'll try picking one. It looks like it picks it dead center, so we're looking really good there. If it wasn't perfectly centered, I'd adjust my top camera to nozzle offset. You can actually put the part back into the tape using the recycle button in OpenPMP. 
So I'll do this with the NeoPixels as well. If the camera isn't detecting the part correctly and the red rectangle that it puts on the image isn't hugging the part outline really well, you can click this button to adjust the vision pipeline. I can usually just mess with the value under threshold and that usually tunes what I needed to tune, but there's a whole bunch of options that you can customize if you're having trouble with it. All right, so now I'm gonna open up the board file and take a look at all the parts that I wanna place. I'll make sure that the only enabled ones are the ones that I really actually want to have placed and that all the status says ready which means that each one has a feeder and it has parts and is ready to rock. So with these buttons, I'm gonna check and see where OpenPMP thinks all the placements are. And it's not great, but this can be solved with fiducial calibration. We have this enabled to automatically run at the beginning of a job, so we're just gonna hit go. So now the fiducial cal runs and OpenPMP checks for all these little dots all across the PCB and rearranges where it thinks the board is in space based on where it actually finds them to be. After it does this, it has a much better idea of where the board is in space and exactly where to place the parts. And then off it goes. It pulls parts from the feeder, aligns them using the bottom camera, and then places them on the board. Ugh. <laughs> I forgot to remove the film from my tape. <laughs> it tried, but I just forgot to remove it. <laughs> so I pulled the film off and just set it back to running. And it pretty much just runs like this for a while. I'm catching up on some notifications on my phone and watching it run. Eventually it needs more LEDs, so I pull the tape through and kick it off again. I left to go kick off an FDM print and chat with Lucian for a little bit. I catch up on Discord and go through my email, and then I pull the tape for the 100 nanofarad capacitors through when it runs out of those. I noticed that it paused here and I took a look at what was going on. I had my feeder height set about a millimeter too high. So when the nozzle came down to pick it up, it was too far away from the part and it just didn't grab it. So I just had to bump my feeder height a little bit higher and then, uh, or a little lower and it picked it up just fine. These kinds of things are really easy to miss when you're just setting up a job. You'll notice I only checked the 100 nanofarad capacitors and the NeoPixels for actually picking them. I didn't check the resistors, so I missed this. The first few times that you run a board on a machine, you might notice a couple little things to tweak that you may have not done in setup. There it is. All done. Let's check it out. I just felt something drop. Turns out you're not supposed to hit these things over. So I see that I'm missing an LED right here. That's because of the time that I didn't peel the film back and it tried to grab them, but it didn't quite get it through all the film and it just didn't put one there. So especially when I'm first setting up a machine or setting up a job on a machine, I'll be really analytical with the board after it comes off because there might be still little things that I don't notice before I run the job, but still need to be tweaked. Like that film thing, for example, that was kind of more of a one-off, but sometimes there are little calibration things that you don't really notice until you've gotten part of the way through a panel. All this looks pretty good to me. I think I do want to lower the height that it thinks the board is at just a little bit. There are some components that didn't get smushed into the solder paste completely. So I'm probably gonna lower the height of the board in OpenPMP just a hair so it pushes down a little bit harder into the panel and really make sure the part stays in place. But aside from this, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna add that NeoPixel and then whatever part I just accidentally dropped and then I'm gonna toss it in the reflow oven. We're using a Hamilton Beach toaster oven with the Unexpected Makers Reflow Master added onto it. It works great for our panels and we get really good even heating from it. Then I break out all the boards from the panel. It only takes a few minutes, but I've been thinking about getting one of these depaneling tools for it just to make it a little bit more enjoyable. But it's really not that bad. It only takes me like a minute and a half, two minutes. The finished product. I made this little jig for testing ring lights. It's really just an Arduino Nano with some pogo pins. On boot, the Arduino plays a little rainbow animation through one of the digital I.O. pins. So I just take a ring light, put it in the little jig and press reset. And then it'll go through and it'll play this little animation. It actually first goes through every individual color. So if just one of the dyes in an LED goes out, I can actually see that. I'll notice that it doesn't go on in one of its little circles. But if it all looks good, then I'll put it in the OK bin and then it's off to a customer. And that's pretty much it. I set up a couple things ahead of time, like I got the feeders set up and grabbed their position, but that's incredibly straightforward to do. I'd say probably the most time consuming part of setting up is importing your board and making sure that all the individual parts are assigned to the right feeders and that you have individual parts and placements for each one of them. That can take a minute. OpenPMP is pretty good about importing like a position file from KiCad and figuring out what you wanna do. And then it's really just tweaking from there. But if you're starting off with a pre-configured machine, if you're grabbing the machine.xml file for the Lumen PMP specifically, it should get you pretty close to just ready to rock out of the gate. I frequently refer back to our docs about like the order of operations for doing certain calibration steps. It's been super helpful for me. And it's a really good resource when you're getting your Lumen PMP set up. Also the OpenPMP docs are extensive and they go into so much detail about how to set up different 
different feeders and how to calibrate different things and it's really really helpful and I still check it every once in a while. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Really the only difference between this and running it with motherboards is that there's a lot more feeders and I have to swap them out more often because there isn't enough real estate on the machine that I just have to do a couple more swaps per job. And of course we are working actively on power defeaters and we're really hustling to try and get those out. So hopefully very soon we're actually going to have a bunch of these set up here at the office and we'll be using them in testing for production, which is going to be so good. I can't wait for feeders. We're really excited for that future where you click go and it goes off and just makes boards for you. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hello.